6.2 is adding and subtracting rational expressions. We talked last video about how a rational expression, well, that has the word ratio in it, which also kind of sounds like the word fractional, rational, fractional. It means uh, an expression that's made up of a fraction of other expressions, usually polynomials with integers or something like that. So we're going to simplify this, which needs addition. Now, as I said last video, um, if you're ever stuck with how to do something, compare to a simpler problem. So, like, for example, you might see this and think, well, I don't, I don't know how to add those. So then ask yourself, do you know how to add this? You know, make it, make it a simpler problem in some way. In fact, I could even be more similar and make this a 1, because this was a 1 here, negative 1 really, but whatever. Well, these need a common denominator. So I'll go back in my word and make it less simple again. The common denominator here is 12. That's the lowest one, at least. So I'd make this 8 over 12 plus 15 over 12 to get me 23 over 12, and that would be how I'd add this fraction. Well, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get a lowest common denominator. Only now, it's not going to be just a sing single number. I have to think of this as a factor and this as a factor, and the lowest common denominator is going to be x minus 1 times x plus 3. Just like how over here it was 3 times 4. So now I ask the question, what does this fraction on the left need to get the right denominator? And what does this fraction on the right need to get the correct denominator? I'm going to clear all that and change colors here. Well, because my lowest common denominator is x minus 1 times x plus 3, the left side is going to get multiplied by x plus 3 over x plus 3. And this is the same as multiplying by 1. And I have to be multiplying by 1 so I can say that my new expression is equal to the old expression. When you're simplifying, you can't change the overall value of something. You can just change how it's written or how things are arranged. But you can't change the value, so you have to multiply by 1 or add 0. Those are two things you're allowed to do while simplifying. So I get 2x plus 6 over x plus 3 times x minus 1, because this x plus 3 had to distribute. And I'll get 5x minus 5 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. The tops are going to add. The bottoms are going to stay the same. The numerator stays the same. Sorry, numerator adds. So 7x plus 1 over x plus 3x minus 1. We also know that x cannot be negative 3 or 1. And I should probably be saying x cannot be in the set. x is not in the set negative 3 and 1. So maybe I'll start doing that more. But this advice I'm giving you of comparing to a simpler problem works great in math, but it also works great in life. A lot of like your regular life problems can be solved this way, or at least it's an attempt at how to solve them. Because you might have some big problem that you're not sure how to deal with. Like, I don't know. So, uh, okay, here's a hypothetical. Like, back when I was in high school, I couldn't get a girlfriend, let's pretend, um, for real. And I was like, okay, well, why can't I get a girlfriend? What's, what's the big deal here? And so I thought, let me compare this to a simpler problem. Because getting a girlfriend is kind of a big problem, right? So a simple problem is like, okay, well, how come I have no friends at all? How come no one will talk to me? And I thought about this, and I realized it's because I was walking around looking like this, basically. Like, I was wearing headphones like all the other cool kids were. And I realized one day that, like, their headphones didn't have this cool little aviator speaker. And they didn't, like, cover all of their ears. And they also didn't have, like, 17 chins. I do actually want you to know I have to work pretty hard to make those chins appear. Like, I've got to pull my head way, way back into my throat. I'm kind of like an ostrich up here looking around. But like, so, you know, the first girl I asked to homecoming just straight said no. She was like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think I want to go. It's like, well, Jessica, guess what? Now, I'm a famous YouTube mathematician who has probably, by the time you're watching this, at least 30 or 40 subscribers. And what are you doing? You know, Jessica, I don't, I don't actually know what you're doing because I haven't really seen you in a long, long, long time. But the point is, compared to a simpler problem, recognize what you're doing wrong and change it. Jessica slash all of you, so let's solve this one. I want to find the lowest common denominator. Let's go back to yellow. Let's also just get rid of that, because I know you're just staring at that picture now, and it's stressing me out. 
You, go away. Here we go. The lowest common denominator is x plus 6, x minus 2. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to multiply the left side by x minus 6. Nope, x minus 2. And the right side by x plus 6. This will involve some distributing on top, but I leave the bottom in factored form. So it becomes 10x minus 20 minus 4x plus 24 all over x minus 2x plus 6. Don't bother foiling or distributing on the bottom. Now here is the mistake that people are going to make all the time, besides drawing awful sixes and twos over and over and over. The mistake is this minus has to go to both of these things. You're subtracting the whole entire expression on the top. So 10x minus 4x is 6x, and negative 20 minus 24 is negative 44. And on the bottom, it's x minus 2 times x plus 6. Now I can factor a 2 out of the top. The top could become 2 times 3x minus 22. That doesn't really do anything for me, though. The only reason I would do that is if a factor on top could cancel with a factor on the bottom, but it can't, so that doesn't actually really help me much. It can be worth doing if you're going to graph, maybe. But don't bother. Just remember that x cannot be 2 or negative 6. Or x is not in the set of 2, negative 6. Sweet. Let's keep going and stop bringing up my sorry little past. The lowest common denominator here, well, there aren't um, factors with addition or subtraction, so everything's a single factor. So I look at the pieces they have in common. 2 and 8, those both go into 8. x to the third and x, those both go into x to the third. And then y squared is the only thing here. The lowest common denominator is 8x to the third y squared. So I think, what does the fraction on the right need to make that happen on the bottom? It needs to have two x's. So I give two x's on top and bottom. What does the fraction on the left need to look like this? To make this look like this, I need to multiply it by 4y squared. And that gets me 12y to the third plus 5x squared z over 8x to the third y squared and 8x to the third y squared. Now when I combine these, there's not anything clever that's going to happen here. Um, because they're not like terms on top, I'm just going to make one big fraction. And don't think that anything here can cancel, because they can't because of the addition. This addition means I can't cancel unless there's something that's appearing in every term. And there's not a single thing in every term that can cancel. So let's just make it clear that x cannot be y or uh, 0. x cannot be 0 and y cannot be 0. Maybe you should try the one on the right on your own. Four and six both go into twelve, and then I'm going to grab the biggest power of x that I see and the biggest power of y that I see. So it's twelve xy to the third. This needs a two y squared. This needs a three x. So we get twenty one x squared minus ten y squared all over twenty four x y to the fourth. If you hear that beautiful jingle in the background, I'm getting a phone call because I'm super popular now. So give me a second. Sorry for that very unprofessional moment. That was my wife, who, might I add, is a smoking hottie. I might edit that part out. Can anything here cancel? Do they have anything in common? There's nothing that all of these terms have in common. Again, x and y cannot be zero. We have added or subtracted with our simplifying. Now, boof, this looks like a mess. Uh, it's all going to come down to factoring. I can pull a 6 out of this. 
I can pull a 2 out of this, so I'll do that up here. I can pull a 2 out and I get 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. And then I'll factor that. Uh, 2x and x and 3 and 1 and minus and minus. Yes, that'll work. So it's 2 times 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. And if you can't factor that, then watch a video on factoring or come get some help from, from me if you know me. And if you don't know me, don't find me. And, or like, you know, just figure it out. Like, you got to learn how to factor. It's, um, bas it's not basic knowledge, but it's prerequisite, necessary knowledge for this class. Okay, I'm looking for an LCD, lowest common denominator. Both of these can get to 6. Both of these have an x minus 3. So then this has a 2x minus 1 that this one needs. That is the lowest common denominator. I think of each of those like individual pieces and what can I pull together or take apart from those pieces. So the left side is going to multiply by a 2x minus 1. And the right side is going to multiply by a 3. So I get 10x minus 5. And what I start doing is I know they're all going to combine into one fraction eventually. So I just skip one step and write it all as one fraction as soon as I can. The LCD is always going to be what goes on the bottom if you've done this correctly. Now, the top can simplify. 10x minus 3x is 7x. Negative 5 minus negative 3 is really negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. Do not forget to distribute that minus. And this is all over 6 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. x cannot be 3, and x cannot be 1 half. Or I should say x cannot be in this set of 3 and 1 half. We're getting close to being done here. We've got one more slide after this. I should probably stop talking so much about non-math things. Now I know you love it. It's the reason you keep coming back, besides the fact that I make some of you. If you're somebody who's watching this who's not a student of mine, that's cool. I can't factor. x squared minus x minus 6 has to be negative 3 and positive 2. On the bottom right, I can pull out a 5, and that leaves me with x plus 2. So the LCD, you should here take a pause, see if you can find this on your own. But the LCD is going to be 5 times x plus 3 times x minus 2, x minus 3, x plus 2. So the left side needs to get multiplied by 5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The right side needs to get multiplied by x minus 3. Come on, pen, keep up. So we get 5x minus 5 minus... 4x minus 12 all over the LCD, which is 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. Simplify the top. 5x minus 4x is x. Negative 5 plus 12 is 7 over 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. So x cannot be 3 or negative 2. Gosh. Lastly, these horrifying incepted fractions that I said last time, calm down, they're not that awful. And it's still the case, okay? Take a breath. Think about this as two different things. Um, it's 1 plus 1 over x 
divided by 1 minus x over y. And I told you last class to flip and multiply the second fraction. But we can't flip and multiply the second fraction until they're simplified into one term, into a single term that can flip. Um, so I want to get common denominators. This has an LCD of x over here. This on the right has an LCD of y. Well, just on the left side, I don't compare these two right now, just on the left side, I can take this and take the 1 and make it x over x. And x over x is really, um, now I have x plus 1 over x. That's me simplifying this into one fraction. In the same way, 1 is also just y over y. But I want that all to be up here because I'm really dividing by y minus x over y. Now that I've simplified it all down to one fraction on both sides, I can flip the second fraction and multiply. So it's x plus 1 over x times y over y minus x. I am multiplying, so I don't need any common denominators. Thank goodness. There's nothing here that can cancel. There's no like terms. So I'm just going to write this as y times x plus 1 over x times y minus x. And I look at the bottom. On the bottom, x cannot be 0. And also, y and x can't be the same thing. Again, you might be wondering, how did you get that, Grant? You also probably weren't calling me Grant. You take your factors and set them equal to 0 and solve. So if I add an x to both sides, you get y equals x. So that's saying what y can't be. y and x can't be the same thing, and x can't be 0. Last one, I'm going to get a common denominator, so multiply this by um, d over d, and this by c over c, and this by c over c. So I get c squared minus d squared over cd divided by d plus 2c over c. Flip the other fraction over and multiplied, so c squared minus d squared over cd times c over d plus 2c. And the c squared minus d squared can actually factor. That's a difference of squares. But I can look ahead and realize that's not going to help me at all because there's no c plus d or c minus d term anywhere. And these c's here can f cancel, go away, go away. So we end up with this, which doesn't look much simpler, but it is simpler than the original, because the original was that mess. So now we'll say d cannot be 0, and d cannot be negative 2c. So I took d plus 2c, set it equal to 0, and solved. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like it and subscribe it and share it and do all those good things. Or you can just sit there and be distracted by my spirograph as it goes around and around forever. Just going and going and bouncing and bouncing. See you next time.